Good evening. I'd like to call the me meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order for January 23rd, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Just a quick, we were having some uh, commentary before the meeting on the proper way to do the pledge, and Craig was schooling us. Thank you, Craig. No problem. Thank you. First thing on, uh, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over Zoom. Is there anyone else recording this meeting? Thank you. First order of business is to review the minutes from October 3rd, 2022. We had an appointment for the Park and Rec Board. This is Shuttleworth. Talk to the about the Senior Center Building Committee. And talked about special town meeting. That appeared to be the major Strong. topics at that meeting. Yeah, motion to approve October 3rd, 2022. Minutes. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes of January 4th, 2023. Recap of the highway garage edition. Appointed a secondary, an alternate uh, animal inspector and had a recap of the veterans district for the main topics. That was a brief meeting because we had a further meeting with the Ambulance Oversight Committee that night. Move approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next on the order of business is a hearing for a dog at 17 Raymond Drive. Shelly, could you come up and turn on your mic, please? <coughs> Thank you for coming out on such a terrific night. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so good to see you here so often. <laughs> yes. You get your own little nameplate in front of you. Um, I know we have the parties in attendance, but could you give us a quick overview first? I, yes. So a week ago, Friday night, we were called to um, 17 Raymond Drive, where uh, the dog Luna, owned by Shauna Shea, had gone to Christopher Shannon's house at 203 Allen Street and had killed two of his chickens and seven were missing. And um, the seven did come back later on. And then he had told us that uh, within the past year that she has killed two of his, two more of his chickens. And so he had wanted to hear it. Okay, so had you been aware of an incident with this dog before? Has this no. dog been on your radar or on the police's oh, radar? Oh yeah, oh, several times getting loose. Mm -hmm. Several, several times. No, no, she was no, no, no. Just you know, just running in and out of traffic, and but no one, we didn't. I hadn't heard about it. But Christopher did say that he did call about it, but um, <clears throat> I never got the message. Okay. So just to recap, we are holding a dog hearing under Chapter One Hundred and Forty of the Mass General Laws. Um, could I ask uh, the owner of the dog to come up? Thank you. You want to grab that seat next to Shelly and turn that microphone on, please? Yeah. It's okay. Okay. So, so I can tell you that it was probably eight or nine months ago. Uh, my dog did get loose, and I'm the one who caught her with one of his chickens in her mouth. The chicken was not dead. It was hurt, though. I could tell it was injured. And I'm the one who went and knocked. I guess I knocked on his neighbor's door. They wouldn't have even known it was my dog unless I. So I found her with the chicken in her mouth at my neighbor's house. She dropped the chicken, and then I walked over. And I, I wasn't sure what house, because those chickens run loose around Allen Street. Um, so I knocked on the door of the house who I thought owned the chickens. And I told them that, you know, my dog had one of their chickens. It was injured, but it's where it was. She said they weren't her chickens. Um, and she said she would tell her neighbor. 
So that was like eight or nine months ago. And then last Friday night, I wasn't home. I was at work. She must have gotten out and they say she killed two chickens. I didn't witness it. Like I said, the first time she did injure one, but she's a very friendly dog. She's not mean or aggressive. Um, I'm not sure what happened, like I said, but that's all I have to say. She has a very nice dog. She's, she's friendly. Mean, she's, aggressive. yeah. But the dog is not under your control? No, the dog the is under my control. She sometimes, like, her collars have gotten broken. She's a big, huge, strong dog. She's on a metal collar now. She used to get out all the time in the summer. She did. And, she's been much better. And she her. hasn't gotten out in the past few months only a handful of times. And half the time she calls me, it's not my dog. It's someone else's dog. Well, we do seem to be in a bit of a run with Huskies, so that's... On Raymond Drive. Yeah, Raymond so Drive. she thinks, that, that's what I mean, when they call, she always assumes it's mine, and nine out of ten times lately. Nine out of ten times before, it was her. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but usually I know it's two, so I know it's When not. you say it's on a collar, so it's on a run, the house is not fenced? The house is fenced. She's is destroyed fenced. the fence. She can get around the fence. She can jump the fence. So the house is fenced all the way around. The fence don't hold her. So I have a big metal screw with a 500 pound pull mm -hmm. she's actually broke her collar a few times that's how she's gotten out because she will put her on it and then she runs if she sees like a bunny or something you know or another dog there's a dog that lives across the street when he's out she tries to go to play with him mm -hmm. um so she's broken her collar a few times but i got her a metal collar now so that's not gonna break i, I don't see how it can break and the uh, the Harness doesn't pull out of the, the tether doesn't pull out of the ground. It's secure. No, yeah, it stays in there. Yeah, yeah. And have you thought about a harness versus a collar? Um, or, or the full body. Thing? I don't know. I mean, I think she would get out of that. And again, Craig, they chew. A lot of dogs chew. She, their she's right gonna. Now. Yeah, she'll chew out of anything. She'll get out of anything. So this is the best. What I have her in now is the most secure. When your dog is out in the backyard, do you are you monitoring the dog? Keep an eye on it. Or oh yeah. Inside? Yeah. Yeah, it just it happens and then you can't catch up. No, and so the thing is, and if you chase her around, she's just gonna run and run into the street. So yeah, I, you can't catch her. You can't catch her. She she comes when she wants to come, or she goes to who she wants to. So a lot of times, there's a couple of houses down that the lady has huskies, and she knows her. So she'll go to her, and then she brings her home. You know, like she won't. She runs from you. Yeah. She'll look at you and know you're coming, and you could have food, you could have whatever. She she'll be. You can't chase her around. But like I said, that day I saw her with the chicken, I. She, I did chase her around, and she did drop the chicken. The chicken was still alive, and like I said, I'm the one who went and knocked on his door. That last Friday night, I was at work. So. Does the dog have any obedience training or anything like that? Does it listen to commands? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's a good girl. She's very friendly, gets along with all other dogs. My mom has, like, a 10-pound dog, and my, the, my dog is humongous, and they play, and it's the cutest thing in the world. She's not aggressive, never bit anyone, never growled at anyone. She's so friendly. That's all she wants to do is play. And to be honest, I don't know what happened with the chickens, but I, I can guarantee you she probably wanted to play with them. She didn't mean to hurt anything. You know what I mean? That's just how she is. She's very playful, and she loves all animals. <laughs> Shelly, have there been any reports of this dog, again, being uh, you know, with people? Any incidents with people? Oh, not at all. Not no, at all. she's very nice. Okay. Have you seen this new collar? No. No, she hasn't. No. Okay. no. We want to hear from the neighbor. You want to come on up? Or you can stand there and use that one. That oh, we're short on spaces up here, whichever. We'll use Bob's mic. Okay. So, turn that your way. So, give us your name. Uh, Christopher Shannon. Hi, Chris. I live at 203 Allen. Mm -hmm. um, Friday, I was working from home. My neighbor called me and said a dog ran through her yard uh, with a chicken in her mouth. So I went out and chased it down. It went up Raymond Street to where there's a truck parked with some equipment around it. Mm -hmm. And it was a half a carcass of a chicken. When I was there doing that, evidently she went back to my house because I went back to my house and she was in the chicken coop in the run with another chicken and came out and ran the same, in the same general direction. By then the police were there. They couldn't catch her. Mm -hmm. um, and the next day, a gentleman from Ro uh, Raymond Street showed up at my house and he has pictures of the dog eating one of my chickens right next door 
in my next door neighbor's yard right next to her tree. Mm -hmm. um, probably in March was the first one. Uh, I got home. My neighbor came over and said she just saw a dog with my chick with one of my chickens with the Rhode Island Red. I went up the street, found the carcass of the Rhode Island Red mm -hmm. um, right next door to her house. I took it home and buried it. Uh, about three months ago, a black chicken, Americana, uh, disappeared. I followed the, the feathers up next to where that truck was, and but couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And then this past Friday, the two of them. Mm -hmm. Is that like near Crumbs? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's the beginning the of the end of the, I'm on the Allen Towards Allen. Allen. I'm right near his house, literally his house. She, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. It's right on the corner of Allen Street. And I can tell you the right. one time there was no carcass. She didn't eat it at all. I'm the one who had her nope. drop one and she did. Was it a red one? I don't know what color it was. I don't remember. It was in the summertime. It was the yeah. one that I so knocked on your neighbor's actually, door. Actually, excuse me. So I actually went into your chicken run and grabbed the chicken? Yep. I saw that. Yeah. So I know the time that I seen them, they were all loose running around. Oh, they do. They do. I know. Yeah. They go between my house, <laughs> and my next neighbors, door neighbor's yeah. house, her neighbor's house, and my other, my neighbor on the other side. They make a big circle. Mm. And then come back. And none of, yep. And mm. all the, all the uh, neighbors know mm. it and they don't mind it. They don't have a problem with it. I even offered to fence off mm. and they said, don't bother. Yeah. I just know about the two times. I didn't know no. about no third time, so I'm not sure if that right. was my dog or not. But I can say I know it was her that one time I seen her with the chicken in the mouth, and I believe that last Friday, because she was out, that she did okay. it. All right. But I don't I don't know about the third time. Right. I'm not going to well, say. You can't say let's it. Just go, you know, let's just go with two, two right two. now. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah, so they get loose a lot around. Right. Obviously, this cannot keep happening. Uh, yes. You think you're taking care of it by I, having a better collar. Oh, I do, yes. We're fortunate that there is no danger to people at this point. We no, have no, yeah, she's very you know, friendly. Both the, yeah. Shelly has, you know, talked about that as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, there needs to be some compensation talked about here. There needs to be some protection as well. You shouldn't have to go through this. This might not be the only place. You're not the only person with chicken. They can go down Weir Road. Right next to Weir Road, house, and there's yeah. three or four people on Weir Road. No, I know. I've caught her at well. the end of Weir before. Like, she, she's run away from me, but that's what I mean. When I chase her, she goes further and further and further. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the problem must be when you bring her from the, the house to the thing in the ground. Is that when she gets loose? Sometimes. So sometimes she had. Well, so the, the chain comes right up to my back door. The yep. Friday, she got loose from my son. My son yep. actually was letting her out. Yep. And she had the the collar with the that just snaps yeah. plastic yeah. she literally tore that shit i mean they're meant for big strong dogs and she can tear that and she's huge and she's strong like i said you can't catch her you can't she's friendly mm -hmm. i don't want to make her seem like a beast but she's a friendly beast she is she's humongous mm -hmm. so that was the last that was she broke the collar and got loose ever since then she's had the metal one on and she's been fine and ever since I put the stake in the ground before her breaking that collar, she's barely gotten out. She really. Have you ever thought about an invisible fence or anything like that? She's, she's I don't know. I'm not, I don't think that would keep her in. Yeah, yeah she's so not. She's an. I'm point. telling you, she, yeah. she. I have a chain link fence around almost all my house, and then a little part is wood. She literally <coughs> tore apart the whole fence. I mean, mm -hmm. she can jump right over it if she wants. My sister put in the invisible fence, and she's got. Well, she had three big dogs. One of them got out and got hit by a car. She put in the invisible fence and she's never had a problem with them getting out again. And after six, eight months, she doesn't even have to turn the fence on anymore yeah. because they mm -hmm. won't go to it. I think it's the conditioning and the training. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, some dogs it works really well, but you know, her knowing that she can go out and run around and there's chickens too, you know, I don't think it's going to keep her. No, yeah. she's not. She's, not about the she's, speed and the size too. You're right, because I've gone through the same thing. And she's yeah. very, I think she's the bottom the line is that you don't have percent control of the dog we need to go to that i know you talked about a new collar yeah and that's got to be something through the animal inspector we usually give one strike yeah. you know and that's obviously with the compensation that's fine yeah that's fine I, I don't need a compensation well you've I'm, lost I'm not looking for that i'm looking for 
the dog to not kill my chickens. I agree with that. Yeah. You know. I don't want her to kill your chickens either, but I don't think she intentionally killed them, though. That's what I'm telling you. The time that I well, saw her with it in her mouth, I think she was just trying to play with it. I don't think she, like the way you said she was eating I'll it. I'll go to but the guy on Raymond Drive and find the picture. I don't, I don't that's need a, That's it's, okay. I, I don't think we I need think to go there. I think... don't like my dog, and I don't even No, no, no. Let's, sure we don't need pictures. to go there. Yeah. I think right now we need to concentrate. You need to get control. I, I will dog. pay him, yes. I, no, no. I, that's why I knocked on the door to offer to the need to get control. You need to get control of your dog. My dog is under control. chance She's under to show you're under control. She's under control. Shelly's going to verify that. If we come back here, if we come back here, the next stage is going to be, we have options for either, let's say, requiring a better fencing structure or ordering the dog out of town. That's fine. Yeah. You know, because this can't go further. But say, your neighbor's being, I, honestly, pretty, re, pretty reasonable here. No, I understand. You know, and I think this is a good dog here. It really is. It is a good dog, yeah. yeah. And no, animals a good are dog animals, hearing. It is. You know? Yeah, I we like have animals people. more than I like people. I do, too. <laughs> Most of them do. I do, too. And she's a friendly, really friendly dog. She's very nice. She so. gets out, but a lot of other big dogs that look like her get out all around my house, too. So, I, like, I can say, I yep. can say that one time I saw her with the chicken in her mouth, I know for a fact well, it was her. I know. It's but our, it's our times, monthly it's our monthly Raymond Drive dog hearing <laughs> right now. No, right. I know. And so. I'm just saying, my dog, everyone on Raymond Drive knows my dog. But there's a lot of other big dogs that. Well, there you know, are, but none of them are killing chickens. So, uh, any comments? No, I think we have to ensure that the dog doesn't get out again and kill any more chickens. And, you know, there's another provision in the law that allows us to assess a $200 bond. Right. Uh, and have the dog uh, leashed for 12 months, or restrained for 12 months under a $200 bond. It's Chapter 160, Chapter 141, uh, Section 160. So. Mm -hmm. I think well. I think the best thing we could do now is just memorialize the fact that you're going to try to keep this under control. Yeah. Uh, and if it happens again, we're going to come back here. We have to take more drastic action. Absolutely. When will you get the new collar? She's already had it. So Shelley will go there tomorrow and verify that. Okay. Okay. Are you home tomorrow? I'm home during the day. Okay. All right. I go to work for like one. Come over before okay. So one. If the, oh, okay. I'll so if the two of you can organize that. Yeah, that's sure. fine. Okay. We don't want to hear back. How do you feel about this? Oh, I'm fine. Good, I yep. appreciate that. Good. So let's consider this one closed right now, and we want to wish you both the best. We hope not to see you back here. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Shelly, while you're here, any updates on anything else? Or uh, The other two huskies, uh, they, they found homes for all the puppies, so there's no more puppies at the house. And uh, they haven't got their puppies. I didn't know they there had was, puppies. There was 10 puppies. How yeah. many? 10. And puppies. And husky puppies? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, no, they uh, haven't gotten out in a couple weeks, and they are both as... This could be a sequel, like 101 Huskies <laughs> instead of 101 Dalmatians. Thank you, Don. <laughs> and they, as far as I know, are both in training right now. So, they're well, trying. They're trying. They're really trying. It's good news. And there's been no other escapes? Not, no. not that I've heard of for a couple weeks. Good. Okay. So. so, things are quiet. Yeah. And isn't there another one there too down the street? Something yes, they've people been want? good too. Okay. All right. Are there any other dogs that Raymond Drive we don't know about? Um, I, I hope Yet? Not. <laughs> I hope <laughs> not. All right. Thank I had you. to ask. I'm sorry. It's all right. All right. Thank you, Shelly. Okay. Thanks, Shelly. Drive safe. <laughs> all right. So, next on the agenda, we do have a hearing at 6 30, but while we're waiting for that time to arrive, we have the uh, budgets for the selectmen's department that are pretty much under our purview. Bob, thank you for okay. a, a nice little Excel. I was uh, hoping to go back 20, 25 years, but <laughs> yeah. we'll get by with four. <laughs> yeah. um, just to let you know a few of the uh, items here, both uh, Pam and Jane will be grade five, step 11 next year. Mm -hmm. Um, that is reflected in the hourly rate for both of them, one for 30 hours, one for 35 hours. Um, I haven't put any, I'm waiting on the advisory board to come up with any kind of COLA that they might do, and I haven't put any numbers in mm -hmm. on the far right-hand column requested yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, the sheet itself, I did add uh, a 
column for special town meeting uh, budget adjustments, and I added another column for uh, the current year up to the end of December, so 1-1-23, to give you some idea of how much has been spent mm -hmm. thus far on the 23 budget as a mm -hmm. way to help judge next year's budget. Um, I also added, uh, which we didn't seem to have, town reports. I added uh, the ambulance service um, <clears throat> and uh, ambulance town reports. And I think I added, an I added another one too. Mm -hmm. uh, 150. So, um, well, that's going to be different. No. What's that? Stormwater. Oh, it's stormwater, yes. Mm -hmm. um, One thing on the first page uh, employee benefits. Obviously, we saw quite a bit of a jump at the special town meeting for that. Some of it was due to Obviously, buyouts as employees retire. Um, we'd like to get a candle on those who may plan on doing an FY24. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not aware of any at this point. I'm not. So we may just one break. police officer, which we'll take care of in the current budget. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I did have a conversation with a former former member of the advisory committee, who is a principal at Hub Insurance, asking what they're looking at for health insurance for next year. I know personally at my company, we were projected at 12% last year. And this year, it's more in the range of 3%, mm -hmm. coming down quite a bit. So hopefully, Scanic Valley will see the same thing. Mm -hmm. and we're not going to see that huge impact we did. Mm -hmm. uh, where we are, Don, do we already complete the third year, or is next year the third year of the increase, up to 75%? It's just coming up. Coming this coming year is like the third year. Up. But, so it might see a little more of that, but yeah, hopefully that might be a wash with not having a six time buyer. So even though we did get to the 500,000 range, uh, we might not see mm -hmm. you know, a huge increase from that. Also, um, on, your, uh, on my report, mm -hmm. I did put some budget issues. Right. If you yep. want to add to those, mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones that I have at this point. Mm -hmm. Potential. Right. Um, I am concerned about the electricity part. I did ask yes. for a report to be done this week. For instance, street lights is kind of a concern and ask them mm -hmm. to do a year to year recap what we've seen a year ago versus right. the bills we just got now. Um, I'm worried that we may be running out of money in that account. You know, I know certainly I've saw in the past three months, and I don't know, Craig, if you have the number, I would say it's, gosh, over three months of 30% increase in my home electric bill with virtually no increase in usage, you know? So the town is not immune from that either. The um, school building repair, I remember Aaron Osborne in here a month or two ago, whenever they were here, the superintendent and him, mm -hmm. talking about capital needs for the school schools that are in town property mm -hmm. i didn't know if they had reached back out with what they were looking for no and if I that's going to go in that line just looked at what they've done so far uh, uh and uh it's just the pattern of the last few years yeah we put well, 15 in the budget so. well typically those are the small repairs like yeah. a tile floor right. or something like right. that i right. thought he was referring to more major capital things that may be an opportunity was, craig to bring to them the in switches wasn't he no, he was talking about like door locks and different little things oh. here and there. I didn't think it was you know, some flooring yeah. here and there. I didn't think it was major stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, but maybe it would be but enough to increase. And typically they'll take, and we've always worked very well with Ed. You know, we, it's supposed to be that 50 50 thing, and we appropriate 15,000. But typically in the past, and Don, you may recall this, he might take over 25,000 just to, mm -hmm. again, this is minor, whether it was. Uh, getting the drain fixed at Green Meadows or having a small roof repair mm -hmm. at either school, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm concerned. I think they talked about, for instance, the door work was going to be pretty expensive. Yeah, was it? Yeah. I don't remember. Much more yeah. than this type of thing. And this would almost be get into a, a capital type thing. So I would wonder, though, when you talk about the door thing, and that's something that Gina has worked on in the past that we could 
apply for some type of public safety grant, because I mean, that gets into school safety, and it seems like there's an opportunity for funding there. Because I go back to, gosh, years ago when Jean was working on the maglock thing, and she got part of that paid for by a grant to upgrade the doors. So with the concern about school safety, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some money out there for that type of thing. Yeah. You would think, yeah. right? Look around. So if we can get definition from them on the projects, they feel on a priority basis, mm -hmm. and then we look for ways to help them with funding. It has gone, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's assisting, but Mike's supposed to be the guy, yeah. right? So I just thought I'd spend the money mm -hmm. year and spend it. Well, maybe it's an opportunity for both Ed and Mike to come to a meeting and we can go over this, you know, more in detail. You know, we have time for that type of thing. And I think that's the, the type of thing we maybe we should be doing in more detail at a meeting and bring it out there. Uh, you'll notice at the bottom of that page, uh, the budget for the website is going up some because mm -hmm. we're adding right. audio I mm -hmm. to make the website more handicap uh, accessible. But uh, that, but the increase, the bill we signed before, a lot of that was set up. It's not the, the annual. The big bill for setup right. is, is uh, over with. Mm -hmm. so, uh, also, they're having a kickoff meeting on Wednesday. I'll send you. I don't have the. Um, the code for it yet, but mm -hmm. when that code comes in probably tomorrow, I'll send it to you if you want to want to tune in. They're just basically going to talk about it and how to how to use it and so forth. So mm. it'd be good for all of us to know how to sure. use it if someone uh, needs some instruction. Do you think um, legal would go down next year? I would think yeah, so. Would and uh, we did have uh, Jane does have a recap sheet. Uh, breaking out the legal charges by different departments, Department. assessors, planning, yeah, okay. things like that. So we can get a sense of where the majority expense has been. Obviously, we'll always have the, the town meeting expenses, yeah. reviewing the warrants, stuff like that. Yeah. The assessors use it sometime as well. But we, we, don't have a, we don't have a number for townhouse custodial service at this point, but uh, we will get it soon, and it's undoubtedly going to go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. so. I think Again, I saw uh, postage going up too. Mm -hmm. I expect to have an our postage. I think is going postage up. is going to go up. Yes, yeah. actually, mm -hmm. postage it went up today. Didn't today, it? yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, ambulance service. I should have that number tomorrow, mm -hmm. <clears throat> since we have the ambulance oversight committee tomorrow. We've asked for it. Uh, he did say that uh, it might be in the range of three, so he's going to try and keep it at three, something like that. Okay. Um, Craig, do you want to give us a quick little recap of the transfer station testing and what you your? I know there's not a lot of specifics. Yeah, at this there, point. It's, there's not a lot, but um, the DEP is now requiring PFOS testing for town landfill areas, mm -hmm. and since ours is closed, um, it's being monitored. Um, they've started doing testing there. Um, they're also doing testing of 11 homes around the landfill from the previous. 20 years ago when we had that mm -hmm. contamination issue in town, which got remedied by the Scanning Valley Water District. Um, the PFOS testing is new requirement by the DEP. Um, they've taken some samples and there was two positive hits nearby the landfill. Um, because of that, the DEP is now requiring quarterly testing just to monitor that. Mm -hmm. um, and that testing for PFOS is fairly expensive. And rough estimate, I, I was told, is roughly around $72,000 a year for testing only. Right. Now but, that would cover all of it. But, I was but, the 11 home, also, yeah. but the 11 homes were tested. Two out of 11 got hit. Two, two were got hit. They were low, but they were enough to trigger additional testing throughout the year. So even the ones that have zero hits still required to be tested? Because they're all within that proximity? area. Yeah, no, proximity? Yeah. That seems, yeah. I'm going to say unfair, but... You know, it seems like they shouldn't be required to have quarterly testing if they haven't at a zero. We could do annual on them at a zero level. I can't say what the DEP's requirements are, but right. that's what I was told. It would be quarterly on everything there. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're going to keep track and see if we can manage the testing with the current account level we have. Right. And like I said, the quarterly testing, you know, the, the hope is that numbers come back down and then mm -hmm. we'll, we'll fall through and fall off that scale. But 
if they stay the same or they raise, the DEP may step in and say we need to look into further action. Right. So okay. that's all something on the radar for the future. I guess. Excellent. No, well, the funding is definitely going to have to go up for that for transfer okay. station. Now we do have the income coming in from the solar at the landfill. Maybe that to be targeted towards paying the expense of the landfill. Who's to say? Yeah. Yeah. Six figures coming in from there. All right. Anything else in the budget we see here? Obviously, it's a little early up yeah. to the salary part. You're getting quotes on insurance and stuff like that, the town vehicles. Um, the other question I had is obviously the fleet's increased, so you know the fleet has increased. Yeah, we're getting you know new we're trucks, getting stuff quite like a that. quite a fleet of vehicles, no? Well, we have the new uh, truck. The new truck. What else we got? Well, if we if we could give the new if you give the old truck to the Parks and Rec, then we'll still have one new one, new one and, you know, expanding there. One new one, then the second one getting cars too. You said right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, I think we're getting mopeds. Really? Those scooters? What are they called? Segways. You, you, you and I don't need anything. We can walk to our meetings, Craig, for crying out loud. Um, the only other question I had about I can't even walk to the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> Salaries is a couple of the potential retirees from our department. Mm -hmm. Are we going to need extra money for training in temp help, maybe? That's a possibility, but the other thing is that if you did get a new employee, they would come in at a lower, lower rate, rate. Mm -hmm. so you'd have extra money in that account, okay. right? Because it wouldn't have the step number, right? So something to think about. And then, of course, we have the potential for some possible contract modifications. We're not sure at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I did talk to Mark earlier, and since he was coming in next week to have the conversation with Parks, I asked him to bring his budget at the same time, and we could talk it all with him then, even down to one trip, hoping that there's no storm at that time. All right. That wraps that up. And now we have a public hearing. <clears throat> Hot day. Yes. So we have a public hearing for a wine and beer retail license. Anybody here speak for that? Are you a lawyer? Crap. Rats. Now turn your mic on, please. So give us a brief, brief order. Keep it please. Fast so you don't have to build. <laughs> um, I represent the Good Food People. Jim Valadez and his daughter Alexis are here with me. Uh, they've been running uh, food businesses for probably about 22 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim owns 90 Meats and on Avocado Street in Springfield. They own uh, Armadas that burned down in Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. and it's in the very slow process of being rebuilt. Uh, they bought the Village Food Mart from Gary Mayotte mm -hmm. as uh, another food enterprise, and Alexis is going to be running that on a daily business. And as you know, there was a beer and wine license with that entity, and so they'd like to have that. Initially, we thought transferred, mm -hmm. but I guess we missed the deadline, so it's a new license, and we're looking mm -hmm. for your approval. Okay. So want to give us a brief... So what's the process after we approve this? Does it have to go to the ABCC, or has it already done that? Josh? Goldstein is telling me yes, it has to go to the ABCC. He represents. Do you need Gary. our approval before you can apply to the ABCC, or is there? Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. I have the notice too for you. Um, yeah. So um, if it gets approved at the town level, then it goes to the ABCC, right. and I think it comes back to the town and it gets issued from the town. Okay, but you can't submit to them without getting. Municipal approval first. Right. right. Okay, first. fine. All right, obviously this is not something we do very often because you, I think, are the only establishment in town that qualifies for this. So, um, well, that's been transferred in the past few years. Everyone else is on standing. Can you give us a quick recap of how you're marketing it and what the public interaction is? I'm not sure. They want to continue the Village Food Mart and essentially the same business that it's been a local food establishment for years. Is it under control? Um, you have a population going through, so 
secure, not near the door, somebody's not walking and dashing and running. These are the type of typical. Okay, can I ask uh, you valid as people that sure. Sure. come and answer? They can go, they can use that mic there. Lexus is the one who runs the store. I think she's got a full PowerPoint presentation <laughs> to show us. Yes, prepared. <laughs> Okay, so in regards to the location, um, it is not by the door. Uh, it won't probably be in the same location that it was when Gary had it. We were going to put it more towards the meat department in the further end of the store. Mm -hmm. so under, those are our plans. Under view of the cashiers. Correct, Even yes. Good. And the butcher people as well. Yes, good. yes, so there'll be eyes on it. And what about ID verification? Uh, yes, I think we, um, we did just uh, put in a scanning system uh, for the registers and within that there I we're going to uh, purchase a module that will so we'll scan the ID mm -hmm. and uh, so there'll be no room for interpretation. Did you have a wine and beer license at our models? We did not. Oh, so you were not that familiar with okay. No. Right. Is there training you have to go through your staff or whatever the uh, I do not know. You know? Offhand? No, off the top of my head. Okay. Correct. Right. No, no, but I mean, it's all about the ID thing at this point, right. really. Yeah. So. Well, they do the undercover thing, oh. you know, pretty often, yeah. believe me. So um, I think the best thing is that you have the eyes on it. Right now you have it's not in the back corner where nobody's seeing it or something right. like that. So that's good. Great. I know Craig had some suggestions about what brands you should be. Okay. He can All pass, years. He can pass those on later. <laughs> Got it. Oh. Right. I'm good. Okay. Good. Pam. Bob. Anybody? Um, hate to hate to run you through the ringer like this. <laughs> really. Know. Is there any? Is there any, any bright lights? Uh, I guess we okay. ask if there's anyone on on the Zoom that is a a butter that has any comments or. We resident? received no comments from any of the legal no, notices. Have. Correct. We have not. Yeah, Centennial Commons have the crosswalk so they can get over there pretty easy for shopping now. <laughs> Good. So I move approval of the wine and beer license for the Hamden. Is it, what's the official name of your business? Village Food Mart. Village Food Mart in Hamden. This is the good food people, or is it happy? The good food people. Would be the license. The holder of license. The holder of license. The good food people. The uh, manager on record or? That was the kind of the delay for why you're getting somebody a name, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Alphonse. That, that's oh, myself, okay. yes. You Manager on, somebody in mass on premises. Hold up. Okay. You are. Well, congratulations. <laughs> really? <laughs> Welcome. I will second Don's approval. All those in favor? All right. There you Thanks. go. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. All right. What kind of forms do we have to fill out? So they, do we send it to the ABCC? Do you do it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and, uh, Thank you. you. By the way, look, you guys are doing a great yeah, job. Yeah, look at a great there. job over Real there. Man. People are very happy with yeah. it. Yeah. Glad to say yeah. I Next on the agenda is the laser fish contract. Um, I think I mentioned to the board that I stopped over to East Little Town Hall and was not impressed where I talked to several departments and they really weren't aware of the product. <laughs> so I did put a, a message in to Ryan Quimby, who's the head of their IT department. While I was with Bob this morning, he got back to me. He was in the middle of an open gov meeting, he said, Bob, which must be a good time. But uh, he'd be happy to meet with me this week, and since he's right down the road from me. And I'll see how they're using it there, because that was one of the towns yeah. they mentioned. And they stopped at the town manager's work? office, they stopped at the assessors, yeah. and they're like, huh? I talked to Mary McNally, and she said that uh, it's low key, but apparently she thinks it is being used in several departments. Yeah, it's it didn't seem to be that problem. I was in there with her yeah. and her new assistant so, person. They may not know the name. That's what, they may not oh, know that's what they're using to, to, to be, store the stuff. Yeah. You know. So, I still well, have I mean, some it does represent it. a yeah. significant change in the way you do business, and I think training is important, mm -hmm. and you know, steady uh, uh, interaction 
with staff mm -hmm. about the necessity of digitizing documents. You could be. And, so and, and I'll, chat with, I'll chat with the IT department yeah. this week, and I'll have a report back to the board next week. And, yeah. and he, obviously, either of you want to stop over and chat with Ryan. Yeah. And if we get a couple of the names from the Fish people that are... I've asked them. I've asked them. I sent a message to them over the weekend asking mm -hmm. for other the names of other towns in the area mm -hmm. that are using the system. Sure. And Craig, you know, you're around for business, yeah. you know, different places. You might find one near you. Where so, do you go? So, I mean, if you're going to meet with them, I'd like to have a couple questions answered. I mean, to me, I, I'm having a tough time with the cost of this, the yearly cost, the upfront cost, and we're not even getting a scanner. So we're going to still have to purchase a flatbed scanner. And basically all we're purchasing is OCR software and cloud storage. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why can't we just use our server if the going to be operating in this building and purchase our own scanner and then see if we can get just OCR software from our IT vendor already. Maybe that'll mm -hmm. save us a lot of money I in mean, yearly costs too. The OCR part is important for the cataloging and Correct. searching later. No right. Question. But, that, yeah. but we're not, my concern is the price we're paying for the OCR, the cloud storage, the user limits, you know, hundred gigs per user. Mm -hmm. We, we just need one, one central location for them to mm -hmm. store the files, which is what we have in our central server. And then we just need somebody to scan it and put it into the appropriate mm -hmm. folders on the server. So the OCR is good for searching. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But can we do that on a, you know, townhouse level rather than having to go through the cloud mm -hmm. somewhere? Yeah, and I'm, another service. And I am concerned about, like you said, the flatbed thing. I mean, we talk about the plans, planning, right. conservation, and building. I That's, think it'd be more beneficial to buy a piece of hardware that we know we're going to need and use, scan it that way, and then you can go from there and scan it right to your computer. Mm. And then from there, you just plug it into the OCR software and put it on the, the, the server yeah. in the file somewhere. It would I mean, be key know. to see how some other people are implementing it. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's not putting a vendor down. Heck, yeah. I'm a vendor. I go out and sell. But I like user... Use User is key. Use, yeah. so I agree. Key. We need we need a professional scanning system uh, on a cart. Mm -hmm. We can move from department to department. Uh, yeah. The other way to do it, and what, what in the conversation that I had, he said in some communities uh, they distribute mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the the scanning systems that we already have in most of our offices. Right. They mm -hmm. use those. Right, uh, and, and I don't know if, if Andre has something that they know of. Maybe they deal with this with other entities. You know, mm -hmm. you know I think I looked on um, Civics Plus, I think, offers some OCR software, mm -hmm. too, if I remember correctly. I, I was doing a quick research of just who offers OCR. Now, there's a lot of companies that just offer that particular service. As long as it's uh, searchable. Correct. Yeah. Right. That brings up a good point. Just going back to the budget part, we see a pretty good number for our IT stuff. I think it'd be nice to have a meeting with Entre what are we getting for our dollars as we explore that part as well? What's their, and I mentioned this before, what's their plan for our municipal service for the next year? Is it hardware? For instance, I saw a bill in the folder for another computer and I wrote on it, whose? You know, where's this mm -hmm. computer going? You know, what ones do we have that need to be replaced? What are they looking at? Yeah, it's not like they have $1,500 we used to spend before and now we're talking, you know, between service and stuff. You know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars here. I think I saw a breakdown once, a few months ago, that had a list of our hardware. Mm -hmm. that they were calling laptops workstations, so I got confused by their their terminology. I'm like, okay, sure. so we, workstation to me is a physical tower. Right. This is not. This is a. And laptop. some people have theirs as a docking type thing, and yeah. they take it home, and that's fine too. But us as the board don't really have a good overall sense of where we stand, so. If we could set up a time for them to come in at a meeting in February, I'd like to have a sense of their direction they're proposing for the town. Because I'd like to hear a proposal. Well, like they did do a we're list. We're agreeing to yeah. it. We have yeah. a list. We do not have a plan mm -hmm. for replace, orderly replacement. Mm -hmm. But we, have a, we now have a list, and all of our machines are okay. now tagged as well. So. And I will say, if this is just a presentation they're making to us, I'm happy to personally have this in the afternoon. We're not making a decision, but if it's easier for them to come over and show the board at two o'clock in the afternoon what's happening, that's fine too. So. Yeah, and just to go back to the laser fish, um, lost my train of thought. Oh, we work. We're partnering with what? South Hadley. Yes. 
are they waiting for us to make a move before they decide what they want to do, or are they researching stuff They're as well? They're also talking about um, how they want to do it. Okay. Uh, they're they're continuing, they're still planning to hire uh, a company mm -hmm. that will come in and digitize older files. Okay. That gets to be expensive. And, and uh, I'm not suggesting that for us. I'd like to see how far we can go mm -hmm. on our own. Uh, in the case of Laserfish, they would set up a system. They would set up a series of folders and but the, show us how to that, do it. that was my point, though. They're setting up a system with a series of folders, which yeah. is just like our OneDrive right now. Right. Yeah, sure. So it just, it's very redundant to me, and that seems it like is, a waste. Except, except the searchability. I think that's correct. That's and that's why I keep referencing just OCR software. Have. You know, what does that entail? You know, right. is it just a program we can run and buy a one-time license mm -hmm. and run that program? Because the yearly fee was very, right. you know, was there. Okay. okay. Well, I'll. I'll uh, Bring in uh, entree sure. for a discussion. Okay. Um, before we go into the discussion of the community meeting, uh, Dwayne Mosier is here. Just if I can beg the board's indulgence, we had a meeting of the Senior Center Building Committee this morning, and one thing came up about the fact, I'm going to say the information we're, we're working with may not be up to date. So, Dwayne, want to wander up? So, Dwayne is the chair of the Senior Center Building Committee. Mm -hmm. We had a proposal given to us, you know, before about a potential layout, but he used the the restrictions that we had from six years ago about what the land was. And as Gary Wayner said at the meeting, things may have changed. For instance, we know there was wetlands, wetlands delineated between the senior center and the police station. But maybe they aren't there anymore. Things have changed. There was a finger that came down that way. So as Gary said, I think we should reflag that because if all of a sudden that land opened up between it, the layout could be considerably different and who's to say better. So the two of us would like to come to the board saying that, you know, we'd like to go out and get that reflagged. You know, we need money to hire a firm. And Dwayne, you can well, share with the, the right now the options at the center in terms of if there's an expansion are very limited and this would open up one side of the building significantly mm -hmm. and it would also mean the area that's shared between the police department and the senior center now um, if that becomes available it makes it very uh, much neater mm -hmm. um, addition if right. and mm -hmm. uh, but right now we're very limited as to where we can do that and the size that we can put it and most likely, if we had to go out the front, we would have to be before the zoning sort of appeals to have that. Um, yeah, the setback, et cetera. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what you mean by if it becomes available? If it's not wetland. If it's not wetland. Right. Okay. Right. So there it, might be an expense. And Gary, you know, obviously you couldn't hold them to any number, but it was, you know, if you had to do, and we're only talking about the area in between. We're not talking about in back. We know that's wetland, but maybe that finger has come back. So the we, area we are looking at um, approximately from the street mm -hmm. to go back 300 feet. It's mm -hmm. not a wide area or anything like that. But right, that way it uh, The distance between the two buildings we're talking is 400 feet, 300 feet, something I don't like even that. Think not that. even that much. Probably 200 yeah. maybe. Sure. So if we went out to somebody like a Levesque who does mm -hmm. that type of stuff, we would need money for that. And Gary had a guesstimate of it could be anywhere up to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If we are looking for a funding mechanism for that, that would be the something that the selectmen could authorize from their expense account, which currently has uh, nine ninety five hundred dollars in it. But we don't anticipate being that much. And, and, and there goes the trip to Bermuda <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. no. But this, you know, this would be to the benefit of the town if we could. Build it because I think it would affect the yeah, cost. Benefit, and the benefit to the committee. You want the committee yeah. to have yeah, they'll have the, some the they can at least some options to know right. what they're talking exactly. about. If we get that done, we would we would take a look at the wetlands and flag them and all, any vernal pools and so mm -hmm. forth. I'll basically authorize the senior center building committee to go out and get a new wetland study. Yeah. Pretty much, Wayne and Gary know the people to talk to. You know, they've got the experience for that, and just come back with a quote. Hopefully under five thousand. So is it? 
We, we okay. wouldn't have to go to multiple. No, uh, but not that amount. No. Okay. So basically, need the blessing of the board to go out and entertain a, uh, a quote. We're taking it out of selectman's uh, expenses? Right. Hmm. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I told you it would be hard, Dwayne. So while we're on that when topic, you were on the board, you come on, you gave money away all the time. <laughs> we didn't have it. If you remember, right, we closed. <laughs> so that, I wasn't going to say mention that. <laughs> we already talked about the street lights earlier. So I mean, still two two thousand dollars. <laughs> Go ahead. While, while we're on that topic, you know, we're we're on the senior center, which was I guess off the agenda, but mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if we should entertain a a meeting with with Becky and Ellen and the building committee, because we, we got it, got it, got that news last week that somebody did the layout of the townhouse with removing the library. And, you know, that, that brought up a lot of concern and people were very concerned. Well, what's going to happen to the library? Are we going to keep it here? Are we remodeling this building? What's happening? Well, if, if what you're saying is true about expanding off the senior center, what are the options there? or some grant funding to incorporate a library there if Ellen and um, Becky would be on board with sharing a building. Hmm. So I think it's a conversation that maybe we should have and it, I think it could be very beneficial to everybody. That way there's open communication hmm. and there's less rumors swirling around about what's happening and what we're doing. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how we got from fixing the windows in the library to building a new library and spending $10 million to renovate the town hall. Yeah, that was, um, <laughs> I think that really, and I made, made this point to Bob, that went a little, I think, out, that got out before really the select board had a chance to analyze and, what we're we still there. haven't. We still, still haven't gotten, happen. we still haven't gotten to Craig's point about how's the boiler, how's the- Right. <laughs> Electrical, so, mechanical, yeah. lighting. You know, we talk about uh, moving walls and we don't know yeah. if the bones are any good <laughs> at this point. But while you're here, Dwayne, so I thought the committee had a great meeting today. Thank you. You know, really got a, a really good group there. I'm um, pleased with that. I didn't stay for the pie, but I'm sure that went over pretty well. Oh, it was able to get three different samples. Wow, you are <laughs> one. I don't, yeah. <laughs> so are you suggesting we have a meeting with you at some point? I'm suggesting we have all parties involved that are affected so we can all talk openly and have a discussion about the future. Mm -hmm. but I would suggest that we at least have the results. Right. Of yeah. the, yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. Right. Yes. Get that, first. Get that done first. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because that, that should be in sometime next month, I believe. They what? said 16 weeks. When we signed the contract, no, no, no this no, is um, this is the, the land. Gary was estimating we might have that back, hopefully by the. If you go ahead and yeah, with the snow here, we'll get, get the wetland yeah. study. Yeah, 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 right. We're also going to have the town hall study. Uh, sometime yeah, next month. But to Craig's point, you know, hopefully uh, the snow goes away and they can do the uh, delineation. So you and Gary will work on that tomorrow. I'll talk to him. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Good seeing you. Appreciate it. Good to be seen. And it would be timely. Yeah, better be seen it would be timely better be because uh, <laughs> Wayne had asked me to look around for some money to assist the construction of an addition. And on Friday at the MMA, I was nosing around and I encountered the Board of Library Commissioners. And they've got a grant program starting uh, February 1st. So I didn't find any I didn't find any money for senior centers not yet I mean just plug the senior center right now with the Heart Springs Foundation if you got clothes drop it off in their parking lot I just dropped off three big bags of kids clothes last week so good man anybody uh, else that wants to drop off there yeah that'll be on the agenda for next week by the way they've had tremendous success and we need to renew their contract oh yeah so, that's right yeah thank so. you very much thanks see you everybody. All right, great thank you sir so discussion of January 6 17th community meeting uh, it was the first of two meetings. I do not have a date at this point for a second meeting from ECON, uh, but I had hoped for a larger turnout. Uh, I counted 35 in the room and about eight 
coming in on Zoom. Uh, I think we have to try again for a much larger turnout for the second meeting. Uh, but we went through. I, I, I thought that the uh, Jeff McElroy uh, did a good job in leading the group through the options um, and assessing what the general public uh, would favor in terms of the, the, the priorities. Um, I thought they had a very neat interaction system to get yeah, engagement. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was very good. good. But yeah, I go good. back to your point, Bob, is that unfortunately it's a bit like sometimes town meeting or the, you know, maybe the advisory meeting before town meeting where you look around and it's 90%, I don't want to say town officials, but people involved with yeah. the town. We have to get broader appeal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it matters to every person in town and I don't know, short of offering Girl Scout cookies to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. You're going to get more people there. I posted the meeting on the town website so that anyone who wants to go back and take a look at what we did can do but so. I, but I think we got the notice out, and you know, that's where we talked about sending the notice out through the school. We did that at the last moment. I really think we need to, next week, it, next time it needs to be a concerted two or three week push out to people explaining why it's important their opinions are heard. You know, Dalton's online right now, so if we had a date for him, we could we could feed him the date right now. But I know we said maybe there's no even, date yet. Or even Dalton, have it, you feel free to set up a time, come in and have a sit down with us, and we'll tell you what our things are. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a little article on it, great. So that's where oh. it was a great meeting. Bottom line, good interaction from the people that were there. I wish next time there was a hundred people we got 5,000 people in town, almost, and it affects every one of them. We'll make another effort at it and sure. uh, see if we uh, get a bigger audience. Okay. Clearly, yeah. making a decision of, of, of that kind of significance needs engagement by right. a much larger percentage sure. of the population. And you're going to check with Jeff on the next step? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, correspondence. Let's see. Mr. Sebelia, in correspondence, Mr. Sebelia asked if we were going to respond to his letters. Okay. So I think um, a good point made was that uh, the amended complaint removed all those allegations, which was key. You know, I think hopefully the applicant saw the error of his ways, moved all that, and now we're into uh, the next phase. I think they did see the error of things like that was just not sustainable in a legal system. So uh, I want to propose that I would draft just a short letter on behalf of the board. You guys can review it and just respond formally to him saying those exact saying that, you know what I mean? Sure, bring that to the next meeting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't use that weird font, something more like Times Roman, not that curly stuff. Oh yeah, I like that. that. Gothic. 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 Yeah, exactly. Gothic. The old guy. I like the Gothic. <laughs> like the monk. Thou you, shalt. You like how I, Thou shalt. You like how I also bold the things I like to really make a point of. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That must be heavy. A lot of toner at home. <laughs> All right. So, uh, my gosh, the signature here. This is the form to sign. Uh, selectman report. What's that? That's the form to sign. They can go back to the state. Take one signature. The uh, uh, wine and beer. Really? That thick thing? Oh, yeah. Well, they charge by the paper. Yeah. Lawyers. You know. How many were you in charge of? 550 of them. Yeah, they weren't allowed to charge. <laughs> right. A lot for private practice, I'm sure. They did. Uh, selectman reports. I reported on the uh, senior center. There is a, an opening on the sen senior center board. Uh, Tina Duran has stepped down, so. Um, check with Becky, but I believe that's an under 60 position, so we should put that out there. There's an, hi John, it's Becky. There's also an over 60 position because we lost Ed Norman as well. Okay. And it is an extremely fun board that has very. a great time, very fun. Um, if you came to the Zoom meeting, you would just, I mean, gosh, you'd never want to leave. So that's there. Um, it's the senior center. Board? The senior center board, yeah, yeah. 
not the building, regular board. Uh, they meet once a month, second Tuesday of the month, I believe. Correct. Thank you. I'll put this on the website. Okay. Uh, the, let's see, what else do we have? Speaking of, Becky, do you have your budget coming in shortly or? Uh, I submitted my budget with holes where the salaries will be put in once there's a COLA determination or salary determination. So there, I did email it over to um, your office and I believe I'm on the agenda next Monday to review that with you. Would you like to be on next Monday? I think, yeah. I think I'm scheduled for next Monday. Now you are. Okay. okay. All right. Um, how are the current grant programs? Any danger from the state about doing any mid-year cuts? Uh, not that I've been made aware of, no. Yeah, they got more money than God. I heard I the governor should. on Friday, and, and she is very optimistic that every, the, the gravy train is going to continue to roll for another year. That, uh, the state revenues are coming in, mm -hmm. and that she's going to fund uh, all of the grant programs for municipalities. So, so we yeah, should be getting the checks. They got five billion excess. Yeah, they have seven billion in the rainy day fund. Yeah. But they get their checks from and the they expect uh, income to, tax, and they expect to get one point five billion from the uh, millionaires extra tax. tax yeah. You know, John John's tax. <laughs> <You know. laughs> we just told you to bought some property next to your house just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's my report. Um, anybody else? Um, Parks and Rec is meeting tomorrow. I'll be there for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Don, are you going to the ambulance one uh, Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah, I'll go to the ambulance one. Uh, and then also on tomorrow night, I have a meeting, the first meeting of the uh, planning committee for the uh, part of the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And this committee is going to look at the review of the utilization of all the buildings mm -hmm. and uh, look at also some contract issues. I, think, I know we all attended the school committee uh, broad overview, if you will. Not a lot of specifics there, which they can't do until they get the state yeah, number. Yeah. Which and, it, and with an administration change, that number always comes out late. But a bit of I want to say a bit of doom and gloom. But they did report on a lot of projected high increases in their budget numbers. Yeah. And some sounded pretty accurate, knowing what I know about business going on right now. So I think we have to be cognizant of the fact there could be a, a large increase in the request for the school line item this year. I think they said that there's special ed was going up 800,000. Yep. Uh, that alone. Yep. Yeah. yep. So I think a lot of that has to do with um, the state not being able to reimburse, right? Yeah, they, the, the state raised the reimbursement rates for the special mm -hmm. ed people by 14% but hasn't provided funding to the schools to offset right. them. Sure. Nice. All right, so that's the committee things. Uh, Bob, town administrator report. Okay, I just mentioned I, I went to the Mass Municipal Association meeting on Friday. Um, no I gas. very useful. There's no gas reimbursement. You have an electric car. I'm not clear. asking for right, any, just checking. Uh, any reimbursement. Uh, well, I have a parking receipt. But. <laughs> Anyway, um, use that credit card. <laughs> um, and for the last week, and especially today, I spent a lot of time on the trying to come up with numbers for the operating mm -hmm. budget for, for 24. Um, uh, you did see, I did send you uh, the grant request that I, I started mm -hmm. with uh, for the East Main Street Bridge. Uh, we had, you know, a $30,000 grant. But that did a lot of the environmental work. Mm -hmm. The engineering work for the bridge remains to be done. Was that the grant that we got and they did the study and then it came back that it didn't qualify for the grant? No, that's not, no, that's not it. That's not the one I'm thinking about no. on the Main Street Bridge? No, this, this, this will qualify and I think we will get okay. funded for this. Uh, and I think once, once we have the engineering work completed, uh, depends on economic conditions, but I think there's some chance that we can get funded through the bridge itself. So is there a chance we're not going to be 
grant for the engineering work and my next question would be since that's on the gaming pathway yeah. can we use gaming money for that uh, we probably can mm -hmm. um, I already have an agenda for the gaming commission of the sidewalk mm -hmm. that we have talked about and some money for uh, police training for the bridge uh, academy work for, for the police department so <clears throat> they told me that uh, you don't have to be limited to one grant proposal mm -hmm. um, i'm fairly optimistic that we're going to get funded for this mm -hmm. i put a number in there that's a little higher than it needs to be but um, mm -hmm. All right, that's something to put on the agenda for next week. When we have Mark in here, if we get an update on our different bridge things, Rocka Dundee, yes. uh, the South Road South Bridge yeah. is one. I did talk up to Mark about Rocka Dundee, and you know, he doesn't know anything. Right. It's not uncommon for the state. Not we, were on the, we were on that Zoom meeting. None of the people yeah. in the meeting knew anything. Yeah. And well, <clears throat> OK, um, Ambulance Oversight Committee is meeting. Uh, they will do what the selectmen have uh, requested, and that is make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's all that I know. I don't know where the votes are here, but uh, they're going to, I guess, um, mm -hmm. we will have a number for a one-year extension, and that will be part of their decision-making, mm -hmm. I guess. So, um, kickoff meeting for well, audio, uh, I mentioned they'll have a earlier. For the, they'll have a number for recommendation? Yes. We have, we've requested from uh, the president of action yeah uh, a number should the selectmen decide to right extend. but the, the the oversight committee doesn't need the number to recommend or not recommend they don't no. no but that's really what they are focused on i think their focus should be on the service yes. the quality mm -hmm. and just the oversight of the operations right. on the base to make the recommendation right nothing financial what i've heard from them is uh, there's a reasonable number, I think, that will make them more favorable because some, maybe not all, uh, feel as though the town would have difficulty finding a comparable arrangement mm -hmm. for the money. And so if the money is reasonable, I think that will incline, maybe, I don't know where the votes are going to break out, but that will incline certainly some of them that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. I, I would really like them not to focus on the monetary aspect of it. I want to. I want them to go into performance, performance, yeah. and quality. And are we getting mm -hmm. what what we signed up for? <laughs> I, I want the recommendation based on right. everything. I don't care the price. Yeah. I want them to make their honest opinion without a price. Right. I mean, we're not talking about the bucks from them. We want to know we got the bang for the bucks we spent already. Yeah, now when you, by the way, when you look at the budget, it may be a little confusing. I, I gave you the, the, mm -hmm. the numbers for prior years. Remember, we, we made an extra payment. So the actual expenditure for, I think, 2021 was 305, not 333. Then it went on the next but year. But the expenditure for the next year is 370, mm -hmm. not 353. Right, but is it like Don said before, does that show the rebates also or not? Uh, I know the I, rebates go into the general fund. Right. They don't come back against that line item. I, I did not discount for the rebate yeah. with a $14,000 maybe a, rebate. Maybe an asterisk down below but, uh, just to show the net cost to the budget per se. Yeah. Like I say, it's not the line item, but it is, yeah. you know, kickback. I didn't say kickback. Did okay. Um, rebate. Rebate, thank you. I mentioned Tina Durant. I said kickback uh, once and it's golden about that. Did there. it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you'll so then there's a, a new hire at the senior mm -hmm. center uh, there. Yeah. Um, I'm working on the new grants from the Gaming Commission. And lastly, uh, I spoke with uh, our moderator today. He has made the appointments to the Government Study Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, he is going to uh, ask that the selectmen sign the appointment slips next week and get the get the uh, government study committee underway. Are we still going to town meeting to get approval for that? No, we did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. Special right. town meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the fall Not meeting, of it today. Fall right. meeting yeah. approved it. Yeah. Right. Uh, There's one more so thing. So all, have... all we need is the appointment slips and then uh, get them, uh, get a meeting established, let mm -hmm. them uh, elect the chair, and then 
off they go. I think go. we talked about the clerical support. Yes. Said if they needed any money, we'd take it out of temporary help. That's what he right. requested today right. that I bring up to you, and that's why I have it there. I, think, I thought we'd already said yeah, that. Yeah, that. The board would be agreeable to that. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. said that. Finding somebody would be the big part. Yeah. Right. How do you make out with um, so advisory clerk is? That's on track. He found someone. Yeah. Right. Uh, in the building. Oh. Uh, an existing employee who had a few hours and wanted more. Okay, then. Good. And, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, I've listed uh, potential warrant articles. On one this. might, and I see those, and one might be came up today. If we go further, you know, with the senior center building addition, uh, there might be need for funding for an RFQ. Mm -hmm. You know, so that might be something. Again, it may not be spent, but we need to like put money aside for it. They don't come free. I don't uh, know what the number is, Bob. You might be talking, you know, twenty, twenty-five thousand to develop yeah. a proper yeah. one. So, and I have a list there of uh, budget notes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it may or may not be comprehensive. I put down there, by the way, some funding for an actuarial, actuarial report for OPEP. Yeah, Don or Dixon. That chart that I showed you a while back. I mean, yeah. it's it's time, I think, that we start putting money aside. Yeah. You get on budget things. I was going to ask you this, Don, before. Um, the retirement thing. Yeah. So, what do they still look at the 9%? Yes, yeah, our stuff. It's 28% yeah. plus our stuff. Yeah. That's state mandated. Right. Any refund from prior years or no? No. no. Okay. It'll be it'll be eight percent. Are they getting close to getting to the number? Or what's twenty twenty? They usually comes out of February. They usually comes. No, they, they don't. Oh no, they're getting. <clears throat> when are they yeah, projecting? Two thousand thirty-six. Twenty thirty-six. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there will be a decrease, of some significance around two thousand thirty-one. Mm -hmm. uh, but up until then, we're going to get hammered every year at around eight percent. Yeah, plus any new employees. Plus any new employees. Plus right. the new employees or right. other benefits that yeah, raises will, well. mm -hmm. will affect our cost. Okay. Thank you, Bob. All right. Is there any other business to come before the board? Motion to adjourn. Second. I like that. I had to wait a second. That was it. You considered it. I appreciate <laughs> that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Build it.